actually, but in contrast to that, Carl, this is one match where if the unseeded player was to win, yes, it would be an upset, but I don't think anyone would be looking at it and feeling particularly shocked. No, Press I think on paper, you've got to make Joshua Phil a favourite, of course, just because First rock. obviously First he's playing break. the game a lot. Chris said in his interview he's not been playing much. How much preparation has he put in for this event? Well, that's another story. We just don't know. But one thing that is in Chris's favour, talking from a pool aspect, is the break. He's breaking real nice. So what that means is, as you've just seen, he's made two balls at ease on the break shot. So... There's going to be less clusters. That means cue ball control doesn't have to be as tight. And it's basically a run out Extension game. Code. And that's going to favour Chris more than Joshua. 43 years of age. An absolute Q sports all rounder. One of the world's most prominent eight ball players. And he's been a professional snooker with a little bit of success. Yeah, it's a great opening pot there from Chris. If there's ever a man who you wanted to make a difficult pot, well, Chris would be at the top of many people's list. Mentioned his eight ball successes. He's had plenty here in nine ball as well. Former Moscone Cup MVP. So that tells you a lot about his quality. He's been a winner of the China Open. Over a decade ago now, very lucrative event. And you sort of feel he just wants to be involved in something all the time with a cue in his hand, wherever there's an event to be played. He did say he hasn't played a lot recently, but he has been busy with good success in recent months on the eight ball circus. But this really is the premier form of the game these days. This is where you really want to make your biggest impact. And in no time at all, with the help of two balls off the break, Chris Melling has raced through this opener. Joshua Chris Filler knows he's in a match here. He's already 1-0 down. So much importance now in these new nine ball rankings. There have been various attempts to get world ranking systems going over the years, but there hasn't really been a proper structure to back it up. So now this is what we have, a proper calendar with tournaments, some of them promoted by Matchroom, some of them brought in from the Euro Tour and other promoters as well. And they're building up the points at the moment. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, the early leader, Joshua Filler in second place there. They all have a ranking at the moment that was effectively decided by committee at the start of the year, but these points will be piling up throughout 2022, and then come the end of the year, the points you've got will determine your ranking, and from that stage on, that's what the rankings will be based on. Huge event this year, Whirlpool Championship, and the first of the matchroom ranking events that we've seen this season. They did, of course, promote the Premier League earlier in the year. And I think really nowadays, Carl, there are two types of pool events. There are matchroom events and everything else. Yeah, 100% right. That Michael and, of course, Sanchez Ruiz is topping the Second ranking. Rock. He won the Derby Chris City Classic break, nine ball one championships, beating Joshua Filler in the final. And there's a lot of events coming up now. Lost the cue ball a little bit there, but you've seen the wing ball fly in very generous and it's another break where he's made two balls and there's no clusters that is going to be a lot of the story of this championships yeah we'll see a lot of changes in those rankings after each of these really big events with the really big points on offer the numbers you saw there relatively small really in the context of the sort of points you'll need to be at or near the very top of that list come the end of 2022 of course, three places on each of the Moscone Cup teams will be decided by those rankings. So Chris just playing a thin safety. 
cue ball found the gap and I don't think he's hooked Joshua. Chris might be tempted with a jump here. Because the one ball's gone a little a little close to the corner this day and age a lot of the players really fancy making this type of shot extension code can't really guarantee a cue ball though that's going to be the worry if he does pop this and he got close that's why it stayed near that pocket Oliver Sholnoki of Hungary, semi-finalist last year, has raced through his opening match 9-0 against Hassan Shaz Mohamed. Kasper Matikainen of Finland, who we've seen make an impact on this championship in the past, is on the hill, 8-5 up against Sanjan Pelivanovic. Billy Thorpe, someone who might be touted as a potential outsider to at least go on a good run, maybe even win this. 4-1 down, though, against Ip Tung Pong. And Mieszko Fortunski in the early stages of his match, one of the rising stars of the European scene, he leads Jeff Buckley 3 1. Joshua Filler, 24 years of age, already one of the biggest names in the sport, winner of the World Championship in 2018, followed that up by winning the US Open in Las Vegas the following year. There's his wife, Pia, who played earlier today and was beaten. to a fairly fluent start here from both players. Yeah, this is just the reply Joshua needed. We don't expect this to be a slow match, that's for sure. Yeah, very swiftly, we've arrived at filler one, Melling one. Joshua Filler, who went very close in the Premier League here in Milton Keynes about six weeks ago. We've beaten in the final by Copen Yi. We were talking about him earlier. Great to see him back on the scene. It looks as though he's heading for the hill here. There's nine ball for an 8-3 lead for Jakob Konyar. Former world champion Copen Yi. Good to see him back on the world stage. Could you see him winning it here, given, as you say, the fact that he is only coming back onto the stage and hasn't been playing a huge amount in events like this for travel reasons of late? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see him lifting the trophy at the end of the week, along with a few others, mine, but he's a class player, he really is. I know he's been playing a lot in Taiwan, just not on the world stage. That's a tough match he's got there. It was a tough, tough draw against Jakub Konya. But he seems to be going along nicely. Keep you updated. That's Joshua third Filler. Rack. Joshua Filler to break one rack each. Yes, his third rack underway. Well, cue ball looks a little weird at first, as if he put a bit of the wrong side on it. Keep an eye on that. Yeah, Konyar, who you mentioned there, and what a tough draw he is for Kopenyi. He, of course, was part of the Slovakia team that stunned Austria in the first round of the World Cup of Pool last year. Went on to get to the semi finals.
Joshua Filler was part of the Germany team. Who won that title. Shane Van Boning will be playing later. Doesn't look like he's been doing too much practice this morning because he seems to have been sitting watching on the main table throughout these first couple of matches. Still looking to win this world title. US Open has been his happiest playground. He's been close in this on a couple of occasions. Yeah, that's a nice shot. Decided to play it a little harder the second rail we suspected we could be in for a treat with this first round clash and so far we're getting it Joshua Filler was 1-0 down but he now leads Chris Melling by two rounds Two high-quality players producing high-quality fare on the main table, which we'll get back to in a moment. But this is Kasper Matikainen of Finland, who we were talking about earlier, rounding it out with a 9-5 win and getting through his first match. And Copin Yi, who we were looking at earlier, someone who will definitely feel he can take out the title here, trying to make up for lost time and all those events he's missed over the last couple of years. He's through with a comfortable 9-3 win over Jakob Konyar. Copinier advances. Joshua Filler, former winner of this title as well. He's 2 1 up and he'll be coming to the table to break in a moment against Chris Melling. That was Mika Imminen who just played a nice Rock back four. shot on the two. Joshua Filler to break, leading by two racks to one. He's won this title before, of course. He's also won pretty much everything else. Now, pay attention to the yellow one ball. He's going to try and tee this ball over the corner from where he's breaking. Eh? So he's backing over towards it. And he's hoping for a shot. And, well, that looks tight. That's the break he's purposely trying. He's trying to tee the one ball up over near that corner. So there's a bit of a window available, but it... That will be a lot tighter than that camera tells you, especially when you're playing it into a blind pocket. So, is he having a look at this? It looks like he is. Oh, he's done a wonderful job at that. Joshua Filler, I sort of liken him to the likes of Michael Van Gerwen in the darts world. I don't know, he just, he just has that air of similarities where just so talented and fluent and he puts a bad performance in. Yeah, he was absolutely fine in the early stages of the Premier League here about six weeks ago. He was looking like the best player for most of the tournaments. And just a few errors started to creep in in the final against Alban Ocean and he came away without the trophy. That is a wonderful positional shot it really is to draw the cue ball out to miss the six what a shot yeah it's high quality a positional shot as you'll ever see and i know what you mean about the van gerwen comparison it just makes it look so easy and effortless Winner breaks format, momentum can be such a big factor in these matches. He's got a chance here to make it consecutive break and runs. 
you're not familiar with the nine ball form of the game. Break and run means when you pot something off the break, see it out from there. And overall, that's three racks in a row now for Joshua Filler, the former champion. He's off to a flying start here. 3-1 up on Chris Melling. Just looking at some of the results going through there. Kaplan credited with a 9-0 win. Monica Webb didn't actually turn up and it was too late to get a replacement, so the match wasn't actually played, so that's why that comes up as 9-0. FSR, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, did have to play his match and got through it without losing a rack, as did Oliver Shulnocki in his. Eklund Kachi as well, a 9 0 winner. Omar Al Shaheen, though, last year's runner up, taken the full distance by JJ4 before getting through 9 8. Real tussle all the way in that one. Alban Ocean, the defending champion, we see going through there, a 9 3 winner in the earlier match on the main table against Loho Sum, who looked very nervous early on but did settle a bit before Ocean pulled away again towards the finish. So much to keep up with over these first few days. Five. You always notice towards the Joshua end of an event like this how it just gets quieter and quieter with fewer and fewer tables in action towards the finish. Joshua Filler, no stranger to that stage of big events. He's going very well in the early stages of this match. Scratch just as I say that, he goes and scratches, Carl. Yeah, the cue ball. We'll take another look. I think he got kicked in off, which was a bit unfortunate. Start the clock, yeah, please. there you see the blue too. Kicked it in from an awful angle and all straight in. And that's what Chris needed. All Chris could do was sit in his chair and be patient and wait for his opportunity. And that opportunity's come. And it's another rack where the balls are all sat in the open. This is definitely going to be the theme of the week. Whenever you use the magic rack, you get that perfect rack. Or well, the wing ball. It should pretty much go in the pocket every time. And just as I was talking about momentum and how Filler was starting to build us, no matter how much of it you've got, you just have that little bit of misfortune, and suddenly all that momentum is gone. talking about how easy filler can make the game look sometimes, but Melling, so blessed with talent as well. Talk about what a Q Sports all-rounder he is. And he certainly gets on with it as well. Seems like only a moment ago that he was handed Chris the Melling chance back. unexpectedly. And he's already taken it to the full. Melling closes to one behind at 3-2. Seventeen tables in action. To start this event off, 128 players. You can just see Jason Shaw warming up there. He's about to get his match underway. That's available on the Match from the Pool YouTube channel. He's going to be playing South Africa's Vincent Holiday. So Vincent's no stranger to the 9 for 5 pool table. So Jason's got a treat that match with a bit of respect. Alex Pagalayan, he's a former world champion many, many moons ago. You can just see him playing his match. Yeah, we were talking at the Premier League about our tips for the title. Jason Shaw was actually the man who was picked by uh, Phil Yates, our commentary colleague. David O'Kady there, Rock six. maybe checking Chris his stocks and bonds. Trailing by three racks to two. Looks very focused on whatever he's doing. He's another player who could certainly win this title without causing too much of a surprise. Chris Melling, 3-2 down. Yeah, Chris has tried the same break as Joshua, just from the other side. Cut break, that's what we call it, where you cut across the one ball and you try and set the one ball up near the corner pocket. Just lost the cue ball. You try to keep the cue ball in the center of the table so that was just a little bit too much spin there for Chris. 
Now, can he get the cue ball onto the four? I think that's what he's playing. He's playing a carom. Playing off the edge to pocket the four. Yeah, job well done. That was teed up nicely for Chris there. I loved his belief and his confidence in that little interview we heard with him before the match. Saying it's his dream to win the World Nine Ball title. Even though he's not been playing much recently, he's always got so much belief. He won't be phased by anything. Okay, we're a long way away from talking about getting close to winning it, but if he gets close to winning this match, even though it will be a huge scalp, that will be no problem at all to him in terms of the mental hurdle to be cleared. Well, that's a generous fluke. Oh. He hasn't got a shot on the seven, an easy shot, but he can still pot it in the right side or play a bank. Yeah, I think as you were just talking about, Chris's interview and he wants to win. That is a tall order, but what he will need to do is start potting a few balls. But what I was going to say is he would need to get off to a nice start in this tournament. Because unlike Joshua, who's playing a lot and he's put a lot of time in, Chris has play, been playing the reds and yellows. So his cue ball is not going to be as tight and as controlled as it once was. He almost seemed a bit preoccupied with the embarrassment of the fluke he'd had on the previous shot there. Now this is a thin one. Oh, look at that. Right in the center of the pocket. Looks in good form, Joshua. I know it's very early stages. We've only played six racks, but he looks in good condition out there. Yeah, no complaints whatsoever about the way he's played so far. Chris Melling had the chance to make it three all. Welcome back. Well into the action now on the Thank first you. day of the Whirlpool Round Championship seven. here Joshua in Milton Keynes. Joshua Filler, who's won this title before and who many people feel could well win it again this year, is playing very nicely. He's leading 4-2 against Chris Melling and he's got the break in rack seven. Cue ball was going close to the top right pocket there. You could see Joshua having a little look. But it stayed on the table. He's actually made the one ball in the side as well. So that means he's hit the break shot a little fuller. But all in all, he has a shot at the three. Yeah, and we were talking earlier when we were discussing Alban Ocean's match, Carl, how he tends not to be the fastest of starters and events. He plays his way into it, finds his way as the tournament goes on, which is perhaps why those league formats seem to suit him so well. But Joshua Filler's the complete opposite. He's very good at actually finding his best game right from the go. Yeah, I think that's just his style of play. I think when you play more fluent and true, you'll see it a little easier, a little quicker, but Joshua, you know, Puts a lot of hours in back home. He's oh, he's got a, um, an academy with two tables in. He plays on one table. Pia, his wife, plays on the other, and they go every single day. Michael, they are relentless. Relentless and inseparable. You never really see a match that Joshua Filler plays in that Pia isn't there supporting him, even though she's got her own pool career as well. Yeah, she's a tidy player herself, is Pierce. She actually won the European eight ball pool championships. 
somewhat three to four weeks ago. Joshua. Joshua for the rack. Also won a title there. And that is three break and runs already in this match. Joshua Filler starting to pull away. He now leads Chris Melling by five racks to two. He looked a couple of years ago as though he might be about to start dominating the game. Won the World Championship and the US Open within a few months of each other. Although he's continued to have success and remains one of the top players, he hasn't quite built on that. So he'll be determined to reassert himself. He knows other players, most notably Alban Ocean, have just overtaken him a bit. Still so young, Joshua Filler. Hard to believe he's only 24 years of age. He's been around for quite a while already. Won the China Open in Shanghai when he was only 19 years of age. Such an established Moscone Cup player already. Clinched the winning point again just before Christmas. And Alexandra Palace with that win over Shane Van Boning. He had previously done that on his debut back in 2017, when he was also MVP and the youngest player ever to feature on a winning team. So he's achieved so much already in the sport. He's achieved quite a bit in this match. He leads 5-2. There's a little gap that Joshua can get through to this two ball. Yeah, there you can see, so he's, he's got a couple of options. Safety looks like it's going to be the obvious one. Maybe he could bank it into the left centre. That's what he's just looking at there. Could he play a bank into the opposite centre pocket? Get the cue ball near the bottom rail to play the red three in the top left pocket. That's what he's played. Well, he's gone full body for it. I think he was trying to play for the red three in the other side pocket. Now, does he go past this four? He's having a good look. Well, you're milking this one, Josh. You can clearly see that does go. I'm not saying it goes in a full pocket. And he's right to take his time, because whenever there's a ball sort of blocking your eye like it makes a little funny you could see where the three went in it went in that left side of the pocket absolutely perfect extension code Two thousand and eighteen was his year to win this world championship, beat the defending champion Carlo Biado in the final, thirteen ten. The fourth German winner of the title. Oliver Ortman, Ralph Suke, Torsten Homan, the other three. When we saw this match in the draw, we expected a close contest, and early on, it looked like we were going to get it. Not so Except now. Joshua Filler is really starting to pull away here. Another very competent rack. He's four clear at 6 2. And it just shows, particularly with the winner breaks format, Carl, how one shot can make all the difference. Melling had that chance to make it 3 all, missed the seven, and Basically, it's been one-way traffic since then. Yeah, it has indeed. Whenever you miss them sort of opening pots, you can often get punished severely. And, well, if there's ever a pool player in this room that is going to punish you, it is going to be Joshua Phillip. This is the way it's going to be for the next few days. Just the sound of pool balls being smashed around the table everywhere. The one thing you always notice when you come to an event like this, Carl, is just how international the field is, and players from virtually every corner of the world. This man, though, is from a very established pool nation. Nine. 
Joshua Philip to break. And he's playing wonderfully well two. here. Needs three more for a place in the next round. Again, playing the cup break. And I think the pink four has blocked the pathway for this yellow one. So that's good news for Chris and Chris Melling fans. This is all you can do. You can just sit in your chair and just wait for your turn. Now, how adventurous is Josh going to get on this shot? Playing the combo, the one onto the four, they, there's a good angle. That is super difficult just because of the distance between both balls and the four from the pocket. So on your TV screens, you might be thinking, why is he not playing a combo or a plant? Some of you call it, but that just offers very little percentage. Well, he didn't mean to hit the four. He was trying to miss the four and send one ball round and the cue ball up onto the top rail. Just flicked the four, didn't he? That was unusual. Though. We were talking earlier about how it feels like Joshua Filler has been around for a really long time. So we see that shot again. Alex Pagalain is a man who has been around for a very long time, but he's struggling at the moment. His opponent, Sebastian Barkovsky, on the hill, leading 8-3. Billy Thorpe, one of the leading American hopes, 6-3 down against Ip Tung Pong. That's a real tidy shot, that. He had to play dead weight. He had to use that ball to get the cue ball over to that side of the table because that was the only place where he could leave himself in pot. They could see he glanced off the green six that was a beautiful shot. He's going to need another good one here, though, because the five looks blocked in a few pockets. Oh, he's missed the pot, though. He has missed the pot from one good pot to one poor shot. Won't be happy with that one. Yeah, Chris. and you have to say, Carl, we've seen a few of those. He's missed a lot of balls you might normally expect him to have a high percentage chance of potting already in this match the last player in the world you can afford to do that against is Joshua Filler yeah if there is a save in the race whenever the ball's jammed in the pocket getting position especially where this five is well he's going to need a little bit of form that's the one thing where if I was having a chat to somebody like yourself Michael and you would think Chris has, has got a real good, genuine chance of doing well in this tournament. I think for me personally, when you're trying to mix different Q-Sport games, at some point you're going to come up against one of the elite players who play this game full-time. That's where you're going to get caught out. Now, I'm not saying this match, because it's still early days. Chris needs a few matches under his belt. If he wins, and he can play himself into the event. We saw that with Judd Trump at the US Open, didn't we? He went over there as perhaps the best snooker player in the world and people thinking he could really show the pool players a thing or two, but as soon as he came up against one of the biggest names, he got well beaten. Really underlining your point. Well, that was a good attempt. He was trying to kick it in the top left pocket and it wasn't far away. But at least he's not left Joshua an easy layout. Mika Imanen is through 9-1. He's beaten. Anna Gradiznik could play Kelly Fisher in the next round, but she's 4-1 up at the moment against Justin Toy of the United States. And Max Lechner, problems for him early on. Ranked number four, but he's 5-4 down against Yanni Uski of Finland. Needs his five ball to keep travelling because I think he might have left Chris a pot here. He's having a look, so that means it is tat. Well, there you can see he can't quite get there as he rushes round for his jump cue. And he's got 15 seconds left to play it. 
because he's used his extension. And he's got 10 seconds. Needs a little bit of luck here. Needs this five ball to keep rolling. Could have been worse, but it could have been better. In contrast to the relaxed demeanor we saw earlier, Chris Melly is starting to show signs of anxiety here, which you wouldn't expect from such an experienced player. It's a nice shot. Would like this to bounce off this last rail. That will make position easier on the seven, and it has done so. It's worked out really nice for Josh. Myself and Michael were sat quite high up kind of behind where you would rack the balls on the TV table. And we've got a good view of the, the full arena. So we're getting a feel of the atmosphere. I actually flew over Wimbledon yesterday on my way in here and it's very reminiscent, isn't it, of the early days of a big tennis event like that, just something going on everywhere you look, every moment of the day. Yeah, the stories are unfolded right beneath our eyes. Well, Chris Melling did have a glimmer of hope, a slight window that maybe he could stem the tide here, but it hasn't worked out for him. Instead, Joshua Filler extends his lead. Run. He's only two away from victory now. He leads Chris Melling, 7-2. If you're a fan of nine ball pool, these are wonderful scenes we have here in Milton Keynes today. Players from all over the world battling it out on the opening day of the World Championship 2022. There are the practice tables up on the balcony we're looking at. Down here though, on the main floor, this is where it's all happening. This is where the title will be decided between now and Sunday night. Joshua Filler has won Thank it before. If he keeps playing like this, Joshua he'll have Filler every chance to do it again. He two. leads Chris Melling 7-2. And needs just two more for a place in the next round. <laughs> does the two ball pass the three in the left center? If it doesn't, it does go into the top left corner. I kind of sat right behind that angle so I can see it passes the nine but he'd love to play it in this left side wouldn't he because well he's milking it again Michael that goes is, surely isn't he? yeah no doubt about, about it I think he's teasing Chris he's making he Chris is. thinks he's got a chance well we all like to tease Chris a bit one way or another <laughs> I think I'd have fancied my chances on that two ball Jason Shaw He'll fancy his chances of winning this title. Very similar player to Joshua Filler. And he's in a similar sort of position. 4-0 up now against Vincent Halliday of South Africa. Board to slope a little bit, and it has done, so that's okay. Really, it feels like it's taken no time at all for Joshua Filler to arrive at this position. 
he must be feeling a little surprised at just how comfortable this is turning out to be. He is playing a former Moscone Cup MVP here in Chris Melling. Joshua Filler back. But he's giving him quite a beating at the moment. Joshua Filler gets to the hill then at 8-2. Looks a bit shell-shocked there, Carl. Does Chris Melling. Yeah, he's not done a great deal wrong, has he? As you said before, Michael, when he missed the seven in the side after missing the three and fluking it, it's all gone downhill from there. Now, if he does go on to lose this match, which is looking likely, especially the way Joshua's playing, he's going to have to win his last two matches to qualify for the 64. That just gives you an idea how this works. If you lose two, you are out. Yeah, the double elimination format is such a tradition in pool, and I think with an event like this in particular, where you've got players coming from all over the world, for them to travel to just play one match and lose would be pretty harsh. Alex Pagalion will have to go into the loser side of the draw. He's been beaten Back there 11. by nine racks to four. We told you that he was struggling in that match against Sebastian Bakovsky who could now play your mate Darren Appleton, Carl. In the next round, Appleton has an all-British clash against Craig Osborne to negotiate first. Yeah, he's an un unknown Polish player, Batowski, but they have brought a lot of players to this year's event, and they have been doing well of late. Joshua, well, there you could see a straight shot on the three. He needs this cue ball to slow down a little. Now, he might have to float over to the left side, just where he's pointed his cue. This is the uh, match shot coming up, you feel. If he gets good on this five, well, you feel like this match is over. Yeah, and if he can have five break and runs from his nine winning racks, well, what a performance that would be. We said he's a player who tends to be a fast starter in tournaments. Yeah. He's really underlined that here. You won't see many players, if any, perform better in this opening round than Joshua Filler has here. Seems a long time now since Chris Melling had a break and run in the opening rack. Big moment for him was when he had his chance to make it 3 all, didn't take it. And he hasn't won another rack since. Such an accomplished performance from the German. Joshua Filler sending a real warning to all his world title rivals. Great display. He's beaten Chris Melling by nine racks to two.